Live your life within the moment, moment And don't go wait until the morning, morning You never know when it is over, over All that I know is till you're older, older So let us dance this night away Good morning and welcome back to the channel. I hope that you guys are doing well and you're looking forward to today's episode because it's gonna be a fun one. I am going to be working on a project in the living room and yes, I know that I just revealed it a few months ago, but even back then I knew that there were going to be some changes that I was going to make. So today I am going to be building a table that is going to be going in between these two chairs. I absolutely love these chairs. I found them on Craigslist many years ago. They were actually pink at the time, but then I knew that I wanted to get them recovered. So I found some amazing fabric, had them reupholstered, and I absolutely love them. They've been with me for years and I will probably have them forever. So when I did the reveal a few months ago, I pulled these chairs into the space just to make sure that we had extra seating for guests. And the more and more that I'm spending some time in the living room, I'm just noticing that it would be nice to have a little table that would just kind of sit in between each of the chairs so that people could have a space to put their you know their glasses to put their uh, phones to put their drinks or whatever they want to on that table I just thought that it would be a really nice thing to have for guests and with my sister being with us for the last uh, couple of weeks definitely noticing that a table was needed in that space so that is what I'm going to be doing today and here is the inspirational picture and I really want to create something for the most part identical to this picture. So when I look at this table, it looks a little difficult to make, but as always, if you just break it down step by step, it's a little easier. It, it makes you be able to like digest it a little bit better. And so that's what I'm gonna do. So step one is the base. The base looks a little difficult for me to create myself. I'm not very good with the router to be making all of those like curves and beautiful decorative pieces on that. So I noticed that I have a table that I purchased from the thrift store many years ago that I've been using for an outdoor plant stand. And it's kind of been broken down and really hasn't been taken the best care of. And so I think that I can use that piece on that table as the base for the new table. So I have my base. Now let's talk about the middle part. You guys know that I've worked with dowels for our dining room table as well as the council table behind our, behind our couch. And so I'm very comfortable with using them and I feel like we probably have some in the garage that I could potentially use for this table. But if not, there's definitely a ton more at Home Depot. They have them in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And so I think that I can probably figure out how to get that middle part built. And then we have the top and at Home Depot and Lowe's they have tabletops that they're already cut out in circles and they have them in you know small sizes all the way up to probably I don't know 12 14 inch round that I think that I can just use to put on top of the dowels and so I feel like I might be oversimplifying it a little bit but if you just break it down step by step I have my base I'll use the dowels for the center and hopefully I can find a tabletop to put on top and done we'll have a table so I plan to go to Home Depot in a few minutes. I do want to grab uh, some water. It is so hot outside today. So I want to make sure that I stay super hydrated because a lot of the work that I'll be doing today as I'm building the table will be outside. So let me grab that water and then I'll meet you guys over at Home Depot.
I am in the aisle where all the dolls are and I have some options for you guys. The first one is the one that we used in the dining room at the base of the dining room table. Obviously I like this one, but I'm thinking I wanna go just a little bit bigger. So then there's this one, which we actually used in the living room for the table that we built behind the couch. And again, obviously I really like this one and we actually have a lot of this left over in the garage, which would make this project even cheaper than it's already going to be. But I'm just thinking that I wanna go a little bit bigger than that. And so, I have this one. <laughs> As you can see, it's considerably bigger than the one that we used in the living room. But I'm just thinking, and I'll go ahead and pop up the picture again of the inspirational table that I want to build. I'm really thinking that not only one, but maybe three of these would look really cool. So let me get two more of these. And then you see what that looks like? I think this could be really cool. I think this could be a really beautiful kind of stem to sit on top of the base of the table and then go ahead and put the top on. I think it's gonna be very, very similar to the inspirational picture. So I think I'm gonna go with these. I think I'm gonna get three of them. And then of course, once I take them home and maybe they're just gonna to be too big and it's not gonna look right, then I always have this one to fall back on since I have so much of this sitting in the garage. So, I think I'm gonna go with these. All right, let's go find our tabletop. So I found a tabletop that I think that I really like, and this is it. And I think that the size is going to work. I'm just wondering if it's a little too big, but what I can do is take this home, and if it ends up being too big, then of course I can just cut out a smaller circle. This side is kind of finished. I don't know if you can tell that it's already routed and kind of finished on the sides. I think what I would do is just take a sander across this edge and smooth that out a little bit so it's completely round and there's no sharp edges. But what I'm really hoping not to do, especially if I have to cut a smaller circle, is to use our router because I am not the best at using the router. I'm just hoping that this is going to work. And I think that it will. I think that it will. I'm just kind of concerned about the size of the base. And I'm just hoping that the base of the old table can hold the weight of these dowels and this tabletop. I think so. We're gonna try it out. Let me change the angle of the camera because I think though, now that I'm talking about it, I think that the dowels, because they are so thick and substantial, that it might actually go really well with the size of the table. So, let's see. All right, so there's the base of the table. And then here are the three dowels. And now that I'm seeing it on here, I'm thinking I'm gonna need a smaller tabletop. I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna see if I can find a smaller one. If not, I'm just gonna take this one home and we're gonna cut it and try to make it work. really excited about what I found. I just love the size of these dowels. I think these are going to be a game changer for this table. It's really going to make it look like the inspirational picture that I showed you guys. And so once I saw these, I was like, that is it. 
these make me very happy and I hope that it all kind of turns out how I want it to. So what I thought I would do is show you the old table, which is this table here. This is the top and quite honestly, I just didn't take good care of it. It used to be out on my balcony at my old apartment and I had plants out there. I also had this out in the back where I also had another plant and I would just water the plant right on this pedestal. And as you can see, that water damage really kind of soaked into this wood and caused this crack. So kind of bummed. I wish I would have taken better care of it. So unfortunately, I don't think that I'll be able to use or reuse this piece, but there is a piece underneath, if you can see here. So I'm thinking this piece could potentially be used and it looks like right here, it's only connected by nails. So I'm thinking if I could take this piece off of this piece and put it underneath this piece, <laughs> hopefully the dowels don't fall, um, then I can attach the dowels to that little piece underneath that table and then that little piece would then go underneath of the new tabletop. I don't know this is all kind of just speculation and guessing right now until i actually get into the nitty-gritty of it but that's what i'm hoping that i can at least use a part of this table for a couple of pieces of the new table so i don't necessarily love this anymore i mean i like it i just don't want this type of um this type of style in the living room. I kind of want something that's a little bit more modern, a little bit more streamlined, and this to me just reads a little bit more traditional. I do really like it. I just don't want this in the living room. So I do plan to keep it and maybe use it for something else, maybe a table somewhere else. Maybe I'll use it as a planter back outside again, but this time take care of it. I don't know, I could even make it into maybe like a candlestick holder. There's lots of options, so I don't plan to get rid of this. And for sure, I'm not getting rid of this base because this base, for the most part, is identical to the inspirational picture. So what I just need to do is figure out how I can detach this middle piece from the base so that I can use this for the new table. So it looks like, it looks like it's kind of threaded on the inside. I'm not sure if you can see that. But I'm hoping that I can just kind of twist this off. Um, it, I, it, initially, I thought that the dowel that was inside of this hole maybe kind of had a screw or something, but I'm not seeing that. It looks like the wood just fits into here and it's screwed, but it's, it's tight. It's not coming off very easily. So I got to figure out how to get this off. But once I do, then I want to strip all of the stain off of it. I actually really like this stain, but I just want to take everything down to bare wood so that when I finish and stain everything at the very end, everything is the exact same color. Makes sense? So I think what I will do, um, I think I'm gonna actually look to see if I have the stain, if I have that stripping agent, and then ultimately I just need to figure out how I'm gonna get this table kind of deconstructed so then I can get started on the new table. So let's figure this out together. So this is our collection of stains and I'm seeing here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab it. We do have the stripping agent, so that's gonna be great once I figure out how to get the base off of the rest of the table so that's amazing what i'm not seeing here is really any of the colors that i'm probably i'm going to want to use there's some dark walnut here i'm not sure what that is this one i know that i had made this one is early american i don't know i might be able to a lot of the projects that we've worked on I have had to mix a couple of the different stains, so maybe I'll do that here. Otherwise, back to Home Depot. All right, let's try to take apart this table. So as I was just doing some inspecting off camera, I do not see anything that shows that there's like any screws or anything that is going to prevent this top from potentially screwing off. On the bottom, it definitely looks like there is a dowel, as you can see here on the 
bottom it looks like there's some threading here and there's a dowel that's kind of being screwed into those threads so I'm really hoping that the same is happening up here because again I'm not seeing anything that's like holding this table in place so this middle piece must have a dowel in it so let's just go ahead and try this on camera this is probably something I should do off camera but let's try it all right here we go oh, oh my god this is tight oh that's tight let's try it again it moved right it moved <laughs> look at this Oh my god okay so I'm right I was right there is there there we go <laughs> okay so did I just make a big deal out of something that wasn't that big of a deal that came off a little too easy <laughs> anyway I was right there was a dowel here in the center as you can see there are the threads that went in to this hole here and yeah that was that was kind of easy so what I think I'm gonna try to do is the same for the bottom I do want to see if I can get this piece off because the more that I'm thinking about it I'm wondering this again this is just kind of brainstorming I have no idea what I'm doing right now but I'm wondering if I put this through the saw and cut it off right here right here in that edge so if I took that and took this piece off and then put this piece underneath of here, so basically screw this piece back on top here, and then from there, somehow maybe I can just take this small piece here and then maybe put, I don't know, maybe put screws underneath here to attach to the new tabletop. And then maybe, I don't know how this is gonna work, but maybe the dowels then could fit underneath this piece. So it would be dowels, this piece screwed onto this piece, and then this piece, along with the dowels and everything here, attached to the new table. I don't know. Just brainstorming, maybe that will work. Cause I've just been trying to think like how am I going to get the dowels onto the new tabletop and to the old base like I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet it seems a little easy and I think that it will be again I just have to go through that like step-by-step -step process but I think that could work I don't know we will see all right let's try to get this base off Go. E. <laughs> oh my god, I don't want to call Mark. All right, let's try it. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry for all the grunting. Oh, yep, I got it. Oh man. Here we go. And she's off. <laughs> oh my god. Like sometimes I just I amuse myself. Wow. Okay. She's off. So again, I don't know. I might saw this piece off this top right here and see how it goes. And then I'm thinking, you know, if I want to use this piece for something else, like that candlestick that I was telling you guys about or thinking about, is if I cut this off, then I could drill a hole up top and make it into a candle holder. I don't know. I just don't want to get rid of this. I think it's really pretty, but it's just not the vibe that I want for the living room. So guess what? <laughs> we have a vase very excited so now i'm gonna take oh no oh, well 
the dowels are right here and they're trying to fall off because I just moved the can that was keeping them up. But now I'm going to take the stripping agent and remove all of the stain from our base. So we're moving, we're grooving. And oh, by the way, did I tell you it's so hot out here? Like the glistening on my face, yeah, that's not moisturizer, that's sweat. It is very hot. Today, I think they said that is the hottest day of the summer so far. It's like 98 degrees out here. And I have a fan that's over here. It's not helping much, but I am a trooper because I want to get this project done. I've been thinking about it for far too long. So we're just gonna deal with the heat and we're gonna get moving. So let's get stripping. Well, not like stripping, stripping, but you get it. Let's put the stripping agent on. For the last hour or so, I have been trying to figure out what the connector piece is going to be between the dowels and the tabletop. I really wanted to use this piece, which came from the original table, but I think it's just going to be too small. And again, the dowels would connect underneath here, and then this piece would then connect up to the tabletop so that it's nice and sturdy. The thing is, is that this is just a little bit too small. So the dowels fit around here perfectly. Actually, there's not much space left. The dowels really fit nicely into the circle, but then what happens is there's not enough space for us to drill up into the tabletop. So as much as I want to use this, unfortunately, I think I'm just gonna have to cut a new piece of wood. It is now like, 6 30 almost seven o'clock and i'm really gonna call it a night because i am really tired i know it doesn't seem like i did a lot today but i did it was a lot of like just prepping and planning for me coming back tomorrow and putting the table together so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna draw an outline i think i'm gonna use this little pot that i have here and use this as the outline of the circle and then tomorrow morning i will come back and then cut that out with the jigsaw get that all nice and smooth by sanding it and then i think we should be ready to go ahead and assemble the table <laughs> it sounds easy i know it's going to be a long process these things always take much longer than expected. Today, I really thought by the end of the day that I was gonna have the table assembled, and then tomorrow we would come back and do some final sanding and do some staining. But as usual, things are taking a lot longer than I had expected. So 
I'm gonna go ahead draw this circle on the piece of wood so it's nice and ready for the morning and then I'm gonna call it a night by having a nice glass of wine and then I will see you guys back here in the morning Good morning so as you can tell I've had quite the productive morning today and that makes me really really happy my sister and I got up and did our morning walk and I hope that you guys enjoyed following us along for that Mark unfortunately wasn't able to join us today because he had an early morning meeting that he had to attend so typically since Tara has been with us she gets us up every morning for the most part at 7 o'clock for us to meet downstairs at 7.30 to go on our morning walks. Now, if you guys know me or if this is your first time, welcome, but I am not a morning person. Like, not at all. Like, not at all. <laughs> but I will have to say that once we get walking and then especially once we come back, I do feel like this sense of accomplishment that already so early in the morning I've had one thing checked off my list. So it does really feel good. Even though I gripe and complain in the mornings when we have to get up and do the walk, by the time we come back I really am feeling good. I feel like I have a lot of energy and I'm ready to start the day. So thank you Tara. All right. Oh, one thing I did want to mention, that strawberry fig jam that I bought at the farmer's market last week, so good. I put it on my morning toast today and it was everything. So good that I'm actually going to go back this week and buy some more. I think it's a specialty item for her because I've never seen it before. So I'm hopefully going to be able to go back this weekend and pick up as much as I can just so I can have it whenever I want. So if you guys are local to the Durham area, I highly suggest you go to the Durham Farmer's Market and pick up that jam. It was excellent. You know what I loved about it? I love that it had all of the flavor but it wasn't as sweet as the jellies and the jams that you get from the grocery store honestly so so good 
So today you saw that I cut out that piece that I outlined yesterday, that piece that's gonna go underneath the tabletop. So the tabletop will go on here, this will attach up to the tabletop, and then the dowels will be attached somehow <laughs> down below here. So I went ahead, cut that out, sanded it. This is for the most part ready to go. And then I, what I think that I'm going to do next is just sand the base a little bit more. As you can see that there's still a little bit of dark spots all over the base. And so I'd like to get this ground down just maybe a little bit more just to make it a little bit lighter to match all the rest of the wood. But I think that it's really looking good. But I do want to get the sander on it just one more time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the actual tabletop and then I'm going to sand all of these edges here. If you guys remember yesterday at Home Depot, I just said that I wanted to get that sharp edge off because when you're dealing with the table, you're walking around the table, you just don't want those sharp edges. So I'm going to take the sander around that edge and around this edge here and get everything nice and rounded and smooth. And then from there, we are going to figure out how I'm going to attach the dowels to the base and, sorry, <laughs> and this little piece here. But first, let's get back to sanding. And this is probably going to take me, I'm assuming it's probably going to take me like a good hour to do this. But for you, I promise I'll speed it up and make it only like, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. So I will see you guys in a little bit when I figure out how to attach the dowels to these two pieces. Everything has now been sanded and now I'm starting to think about the stain color. And so originally I was thinking of putting the table completely together and then staining it. But now the more that I'm thinking about it, I think that I should stain everything separately and then assemble it at the end. That's what I'm going with right now. So what I did was I went over to our shelf that had all of the remaining stains from different projects that we've done over the last year or so. And I went ahead and painted a sample of each color just to kind of remind me what I have. So I'll go ahead and pop it here on the screen just so that you guys can see it again. So the first one is the red mahogany and I believe that I use that one for the dining room cabinet. I think when I sanded the bottom of that cabinet, the glass cabinet, in the dining room I think I think I use that red mahogany and I really like it but I think that I want to match the color a little closer to the table that's behind the couch. I think that the dark walnut is just way too dark, way too dark. Um, so I'm definitely not doing that one. That's getting crossed out. I do love these last three. I love the golden oak, the driftwood, and the early American. And so I'm thinking, I'm going like back and forth between the golden oak and the early American. And I cannot remember for the life of me right now what color is on the table behind the couch. But if my memory is good i think that it was the golden oak and the early american that i combined together it could have also been the driftwood and the early american together 
I could probably go back and watch that video, but I'm not. I think I'm just gonna go with my gut and maybe do a mixture of the golden oak and early American. So for now, that is my final answer. If I hate it, then I'll just have to re-sand it again. But I think that uh, a combination of those two um, is really gonna look good. So I guess I will go ahead and get staining. I'm really excited that I had the stain here because I wasn't sure if I was going to have the exact color here and I was going to have to go back to Home Depot to pick up some more but I think that I have enough of each color that I can get started right now so let's get to work. Safety first. <laughs> Still, after all of this time and the countless projects that I have worked on over the last year and a half, it still amazes me how long everything takes. But to give myself some credit, I think that I'm in a really good spot. I have everything sanded. I cut the dowels to the right length. Everything has two coats of stain and is currently just kind of sitting so I can see what the stain looks like after it's had some time to soak into the wood. So I really do think fingers crossed that I'm going to be able to assemble this table today. I still do need to put on some polyurethane and more than likely that's not going to happen until tomorrow morning. But for today, I do have to give myself a little pat on the back because I have gotten a lot of work done. So I'm going to take a little bit of a break. I'm going to get some lunch. Well, it's kind of like dinner, as my dad would say, because it's getting closer to dinner than it is lunch. But I'm going to grab something to eat, get some more water, and just kind of chill out for a little bit. And then I'll meet you guys back here, and we'll see how everything looks. I am back from my break and everything is looking really good. All of the stain has dried and I actually love the coloring and I don't think I'm gonna put any more coats of stain on any of the pieces of wood. So one of the things that I did want to mention and I put a note up on, on the screen as I was doing this but I just want to explain it a little further is that I decided for this piece to countersink these holes and what that means is there's a special little drill bit that you use that will when you put the screws inside of each of these holes, it'll make the screws sit into the wood and make it nice and flush because this piece is the piece that's going to be attached to the bottom of the tabletop and I just wanted to make sure that it was nice and flat up top. So I did that to this piece as well as I'm going to do it to the base as well. So one other thing that I want to mention before I get started with assembling this table is that I went ahead and 
numbered each of these holes so that they would match with the particular um, dowel that I pre-drilled. So this is number one and on the bottom of this you see that there's a number one there so I know that when it's time to assemble I'll just attach it here and the holes should line up. Should line up. So we shall see. I am going to get my drill, get some more drill bits and some screws, and then we're gonna get started with finally, finally assembling this table. I did it she is done and I couldn't be happier and what I thought I would do instead of showing the final reveal here in this messy garage that I would actually take her inside and show you guys what she looks like in her new home so I'll meet you inside be just a little obsessed with how this table turned out. I think she is absolutely stunning and I hope that you guys love it as well. I think the thing I love the most is that she has the same vibe as our dining room table as well as the console table that's behind our couch but she has her own personality. By no means is she matchy matchy and that was definitely the goal for this build. Another thing I love is that it only cost me $56 to build this table. And if I would have used the smaller dowel, then I would have only had to spend $12 for the tabletop. But I think it was just a really good decision with going with the larger dowels and it just really makes a statement for this table. And again, I think it turned out beautifully.
One thing that I do want to mention before I let you go is that every Wednesday on my website I post a new blog and this coming up Wednesday I will be posting a step-by-step -step process of how you can make this table yourself. I will give you all of the materials, all of the dimensions, the tools I use, as well as the color stain that I ended up using so that you too can create this table for your home. So with that, I am going to let you go. I appreciate you guys so much. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I will see you on Wednesday over on the blog. I will see you on Friday over on the newsletter. And then I will be back here next Sunday. And you're not gonna wanna miss it because I am going to be showing you guys a room in this house that you have never seen before. And I'm really, really excited to show you. So. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Aren't I pretty? Aren't I pretty?